Записа мене звук. Let me introduce myself. My name is Sergey Balan. I work for Dixie Group NGO. I am an organizer of this event. Our round table is dedicated to the thought energy poverty in Ukraine as a challenge for state policies. This is the second roundtable discussion on energy poverty, uh, which is organized by Dixie Group this year. The idea of this event uh, appeared uh, during international research in Romania, Moldova and Ukraine on specifics of energy poverty in every of these countries and methods uh, of uh, energy poverty uh, reduction in every of these countries. Energy poverty is not only Ukraine's specific feature. Even in the third world countries, the energy poverty is a universal uh, um, feature which is also uh, available in developed countries. Uh, Ukraine lacks uh, definition at the legislative level of energy poverty, but we have uh, a sensitive consumer, vulnerable consumer definition. What is common for all definitions available in Ukraine that vulnerable consumers are uh, consumer individuals who are eligible to state uh, uh, subsidies to state support and assist. And so the state is responsible uh, for defining, identifying uh, who falls into this category. Energy poverty reduction in various countries differs. Uh, the main methods are uh, provision of subsidies, uh, setting regulating uh, regulated tariffs, uh, improvement of energy efficiency and energy savings. Uh, 2019 is uh, milestone uh, in energy poverty reduction in Ukraine because this year the state uh, uh, comes to action from the words. Uh, uh, it started monetization of subsidies uh, and energy efficiency fund uh, started its operation and today uh, we have the director of this fund with us uh, at this round table discussion she will speak about energy poverty reduction uh, so uh, this gives us reasons uh, for a kind of uh, optimistic uh, uh, mood, but Ukraine anyway remains a country of uh, energy subsidies uh, uh, are twofold of uh, mm, budget expenses for uh, energy saving. Uh, but this is not the right way to reduce energy poverty. This is the topic of our event today. Not all our participants uh, were able to come, so I proposed uh, every speaker uh, to give his speech or her speech, and then uh, we shall uh, start discussion. Uh, I give the floor to Denis Nazarenka, senior uh, general manager on uh, educational programs at Dixie Group Think Tank. Uh, the research was conducted by Dixie Group and Denise uh, says that uh, you have materials uh, disseminated today. Please do not forget to fill out your 
questioners because this is a, a component of our final stage of research. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming here and joining us at our event. My name is Denis Nazarenka. I will present the main outcomes, findings of this the research. And uh, please uh, s prioritize uh, g g the outcomes in your questionnaires. The research is aimed uh, to um, compare uh, first uh, to find data and then to compare data by countries uh, in these three countries which were mentioned. So we tried uh, to create Mm, to create the general outline in this event, we uh, dedicate uh, to outlining uh, the general profiles uh, uh, in the sphere in these countries. When we started our research, uh, we were interested in uh, uh, how serious, how strong this problem is uh, in the national policy. So we surveyed the population, the respondents. We asked people uh, what uh, problems they mean the most uh, important. Uh, so, uh, definition of energy poverty is that people uh, cannot maintain comfortable temperatures in their homes in winter periods. Uh, uh, so, we ask people whether they are capable to keep comfortable temperature in their premises without accumulating deaths. Out of five most problematic challenges uh, people face in all spheres, uh, the three of them are related to uh, energy poverty. The first uh, priority is the war conflict problem. The second is low salaries and low retirement benefits amounts. And the third uh, problem is uh, uh, higher tariffs for utilities. The fourth problem in Ukraine is uh, higher prices for primary goods and and the fifth in this list goes uh, corruption and bribery. So the two election campaigns uh, this year uh, were experienced by the country and we can say that uh, utilities tariffs uh, and uh, no um, capability to pay the bills uh, is still an important issue and it is used in um, politics by political leaders uh, to gain their score among population. So addressing these issues uh, in the governmental bodies and uh, even presidential election campaign was also related to utilities tariffs. So, uh, whether this problem is objective, uh, we, uh, uh, assessed by the state statistics service data. Uh, so, how many people in 2013 uh, thought that comfortable temperature is in the premises, in their homes, is a problem? It was in 2013 that we had uh, only 11% of population uh, with this problem. Every uh, fourth uh, household in Ukraine thought this is a problem in 2015. And 
as of 2015, on, only less than 10 percent of European uh, residents, European countries' residents, believed uh, that comfortable temperatures maintenance is a problem. Uh, so utilities bills. Uh, this uh, um, indicator in Europe dropped to 7.8, while in Ukraine it increased. The share of uh, uh, utilities, bills, payments, expenses uh, in consumer payments uh, it was not uh, so big, 10% in 2013, uh, while uh, as uh, to maintain this 10% uh, share, uh, it was possible thanks to the introduction of subsidy subsidies. Uh, the verification of document packages was quite uh, conventional, uh, so it was quite easy to get subsidies, but the relevant uh, share of subsidy holders uh, uh, the number 42 percent as of 2015. In 2018 and 2019, the campaign to optimize and verify subsidy holder system started, and uh, in 2016. 16% uh, of um, salaries people spend uh, for their uh, utility bills. In 2017, they spent 17% of their salaries and of their incomes, and in 2018, 15%. In the European countries, energy poverty definition is also conventional and is used in various manners. In Ukraine, we have definition of vulnerable consumers of utility services. And uh, it is different uh, in the laws on the natural gas market and the electricity market. And when this definition was launched, this became the attribute of the implementation of the third package of European laws here. Uh, so uh, consumers are also characterized uh, in uh, general terms. In 2017, uh, the policy f of consumer protection till 2020 for vulnerable consumers uh, was introduced. Vulnerable consumers are people who have uh, uh, disabilities, either mental or physical. So. Uh, state policy is not uh, coherent. Uh, various laws, various legislative and regulatory acts uh, uh, contain not uniform definitions. So this is a task to bring uh, terminology to conformity and to unify it. So. Uh, uh, most attention, most focus is on benefits and subsidies uh, for utilities uh, bills and uh, energy bills. Uh, the situation with benefits was the worst, uh, as we found in our research. More than 50 regulations are in effect. Uh, the, most of them are very old, from to, uh, the year of 2002-2003, with a large number of amendments. Uh, the benefits uh, and discounts and 
exemptions. Uh, they, most of them have no adequate verification system. This leaves uh, uh, very uh, high potential for manipulations. Uh, uh, and uh, our, uh, the country's goal should be to monetize uh, subsidies or uh, to withdraw subsidies at all. Uh, this is one of indicators, benefits is one of indicators which is com um, comparable with the practices in the EU because energy poverty is deemed uh, it qualified the uh, households as those uh, where their spendings for energy uh, utility services uh, is over 10 percent of incomes in ukraine uh, utility subsidies are provided to households uh, which uh, share of income uh, spent for utilities bills is over 15 percent. Uh, what is interesting in uh, the issue of subsidies, according to 2016 <laughs> estimates, um, which were conducted by experts, uh, the system of subsidies in Ukraine allowed most of population of Ukraine to pay only a small share of real cost of uh, these services. Uh, in fact, 9 to 16 percent of uh, uh, population paid uh, the whole rates uh, of uh, services in 2016. So this, our policy is very social. It supports vulnerable consumers and uh, low-income groups of population, but it is not transparent and provides uh, gaps for manipulations. There were 15 million households who were holders of uh, benefits for utility services bills. In 2018, uh, there were 25%. Uh, uh, we see significant dynamics in this uh, field this year. We see political will this well uh, this year uh, to uh, withdraw the subsidies, to analyze the shortcomings in the system, and liquidation of these gaps, filling these gaps. But uh, we need to accelerate pace on this path. Uh, the findings of our research, which we think are most uh, interesting and reasonable for um, taking into account in the policy in the Verkhovna Rada committees. First of all, uh, universal and uh, clear uh, definition uh, should be in legislative acts as to energy poverty. This would provide the chance uh, to sh uh, for policy making which will be more uh, clear cut. Uh, because the policy uh, should be the result uh, of uh, um should uh, co-authorship of various ministries and agencies. To this end, we should start with the first step. We should give a clear definition of energy poverty. So this policy, in our view, uh, should contain two main parts. First part is reforming the current system because it is difficult not 
to agree that we are talking about lives uh, and the health of people. So these uh, topics are very sensitive and the state should uh, carry out its social function. So we are talking how to do this in a more sustainable manner. First, the system that exists, it should be reformed. We should continue positive steps, better analyze why something, some um, measures, uh, they do not work uh, or demonstrate limited success. How to promote uh, energy savings and uh, how to promote consumers uh, to improve energy efficiency so that this uh, effect uh, is uh, also a sustainable self uh, so that people uh, start uh, maintain energy efficiency themselves and also uh, requirements uh, eligibility requirements should be uh, strengthened at uh, various levels uh, of our systems uh, law protection system falsification and uh, manipulations are possible so verification should become an important component of state policy uh, being experts, uh, we uh, think uh, sy systemically, so we think that the main portion uh, of uh, state policy should be energy efficiency improvement. Here we see some positive uh, achievements, but uh, we see also no, no conformity in uh, funding social sphere and funding energy efficiency improvement when social payments are 10 to 20 fold higher than energy efficiency improvement funding then we will not see good results in the nearest future the money uh, for energy efficiency fund uh, should bring results and we hope so we shall uh, listen to the director of the fund speech today to f and uh, we will have a chance to find out what is the situation uh, talking about energy efficiency system policy it is important to address the urgent problems uh, which result from not uh, uh, all European legislation requirements uh, having been implemented in Ukraine. Uh, energy meters have not been installed uh, in every place uh, on, uh, because they uh, should be installed in 100% sites, but uh, the meters installation pace does not accelerate because the liability for no installation of meters uh, uh, is postponed by Ukrainian parliament for one year. So uh, the level of individual consumption, levels uh, of uh, every person's consumption may be optimized. Uh, but now we still pay uh, not only for us, but also for our neighbors. So there is a delay in energy uh, performance uh, of building certification saying uh, it has a legislative framework in place the experts uh, also are, um, ha have already been uh, uh, prepared they were trained and have certificates uh, but there is uh, no political will uh, to place all uh, housing stock uh, uh, to energy performance certification.
uh, all buildings uh, which are rented or bought um, the, the all buildings should be subject to energy performance certification but this has not happened although our state promised so um, vulnerable consumers uh, they could hardly pay for energy efficiency improvement measures uh, and therefore energy performance uh, um, audit. So energy audits are a real need because they provide data about building energy performance and these uh, residents of these buildings, they can know what should be done to improve energy efficiency in the same house. Uh, so uh, our members of new parliament uh, uh, we hope they will have enough political will to do uh, not populistic measures to take care about consumers in long term uh, view. Thank, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Denise. As it was rightly said by Denis, Ukrainian government continues uh, to fight in 2019 uh, against uh, energy poverty. Money is provided as subsidies and benefits, but at the same time, There is no proper energy efficiency and energy saving. Unfortunately, energy poverty, this is not only about finances. In Ukraine, we understand that during these years, uh, during four years, more than 100 million grievances were used for this. Energy poverty is connected directly with the energy security of the country. Uh, if energy consumption uh, is increased, then the country needs more resources and uh, the gas prices now is dropping, but we had a reverse trend in previous years. And also this is connected to stability, energy stability. And this topic uh, is the topic of political manipulations, and many populists try to use this topic in their electoral campaigns. In order to get rid of this, we should uh, go to more wise strategy how to overcome energy poverty, and uh, we will speak about it today as well. I would like to give the floor to Tatiana Boyko. And she will continue our today's topic. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I've listened to the speech of Denise. I won't repeat, but I would like to go into detail about several things. First, this is about what the state should do in order to protect population against energy poverty. This is monetization of subsidies. Uh, today in the morning, I um, communicated with, with Vitaly Muzichenko, Deputy Minister. He said that he won't be able to take part in this uh, event because now he is at the meeting at the ministry. Uh, maybe they speak about the issues of, so, uh, of uh, minimum rates. Alona Babak told us about it and about verification of subsidies. Um, I believe that the Ministry of Social Policy seriously think about this topic, how to make these uh, rates fair, and how to provide help to those who need it, 
and we understand that the ministry constantly improves this, uh, um, but uh, some people, some categories of people abuse the system, and uh, we won't be able to reach ideal picture, but Ministry of uh, Social Policy continues its work in this area. Also, what we need to do is to shift to full monetization of subsidies and benefits to go to full monetization to all payments. What we have today, monetization of subsidies for those who do not have debts and benefits are not monetized. When, what I mean, when people get money in their hands, if this money goes through virtual accounts in a shared bank, by the providers of the service, even if they call it monetization in accordance with the provision of the Cabinet of Ministers, this is not monetization because people do not see this money. And the uh, organization, um, Apura Net, worked together with Employees Association of Ukraine. We created Gazpravda portal and people address us. And. Uh, All complaints that we get that uh, something is not properly calculated, this, these are all people who have non-monetized the subsidies. They just get SMS, and at the end of the month, they see uh, what amount of money was written off their account, and many journalists ask whether the issues will be resolved concerning debts that were written off. Maybe you know about this problem. Part of uh, overpayments uh, at the end of the heating season, this money went back to the budget and people got debts. And uh, then this issue was uh, quietly resolved through some uh, uh, explanations and the money was brought back. But we cannot guarantee that it won't happen next year. No one can provide such a guarantee because uh, people should see this live money. People should understand their bills. They should understand what they pay for. Otherwise, people won't be motivated to understand what is going on and what happens uh, concerning energy consumption. I go to the second issue, and my colleagues will tell you more about it. This is about energy efficiency. And the state should deal with this topic. For me, these are not just words. We know that previous government also named the energy efficiency priority, but the issue is uh, what money is provided in the budget, and we heard about the figures on second, what information and education campaign it delivers. And uh, information educational campaign is really needed uh, for people in order to show success stories that we have and to explain to people, to show to people how their neighbors do this and what saving they reached. Important role is communication role. This is educational information campaign. It doesn't need a lot of financial resources. Second, this is monetary support. I would like to remind you that this year is not exception as a rule now. Those who live in individual houses and I would like to remind you that 60% of Ukrainians live in individual houses, not in apartment blocks, and um, these uh, individual houses are not energy efficient, and these people are in the category of uh, energy poverty. People do not have money to introduce energy efficient measures, energy efficiency measures. and. Uh, they are not included in the program because warm credit programs, the only state program, it could help them, but uh, small amounts of money are allocated for this program. For the next year, 
uh, we do not. Uh, this is uh, 400 million, and uh, this money will be enough for one and a half months only. We understand that maybe uh, this year we had money only only for two months. So no support for vulnerable people about energy service companies. They also do not want to go in the sector because these people cannot pay. Situation with apartment blocks and condominia. The situation is better. I won't take time. I would like to state that we as a civil society network, we believe that state program of warm credits should exist not only for individual houses. Now we do not have alternatives. No one proposed anything. And in the nearest future, the fund does not plan to provide uh, this assistance to individual houses, but also to condominium. And we return to the first issue in this block. People are not prepared to take risks. Journalists asked me recently why there are 30,000 uh, condominia in Ukraine and only 10% used warm credits. There is mistrust in the sector. Four years ago, when we spoke about crediting, 90% they didn't trust this, uh, and uh, we were afraid that people will be really worried uh, and will express their dissatisfaction, and uh, the situation is changing. But uh, 70 or 80 years uh, for this period of time, uh, people believe that uh, uh, only flats belong to them, but uh, people should not think about uh, uh, heating and other utilities. And uh, now people, uh, state, uh, some people say that <coughs> the state should provide capital repairs of the building. If you come and say that you should do everything for, at your own expense and you will be compensated <laughs> some percent by s the state, when you reach some savings to undergo big bureaucracy, the majority of people are cho just not prepared for it. 70% of warm credits in 2015 were directed to uh, replace lighting when those people just try to do something. And uh, we survey these people because we could cover all these people. 85% said that we will return, and they return next year and the next year. Now they carry out warming of their buildings, but for the first two years they just tried, and uh, they thought that it really works and uh, we have a trend now the majority of people they should just try they should study the experience of their neighbors and uh, the biggest achievement of this program is that it uh, has shown people that uh, people can trust the state in energy efficiency measures in 2012 Together with the democratic initiatives, we carried out sociological survey among all Ukrainians, and 45% of Ukrainians said uh, we asked uh, that it is important to carry out any energy efficiency measures, and we asked them why they do not do it. And 45% uh, of people said that uh, they do not believe that the state will support them. They said that uh, the state uh, will fail them. They believe that the state uh, would fail them. So uh, now we believe that uh, we need the trust of people, uh, because trust is like a bird. It will fly away uh, if you want to deliver. 
and uh, we should communicate uh, with people and um, for example, if you held some meetings and you took money from the bank and then place uh, prices changed in the market next year the situation changed and I faced such situation in my condominium and uh, it resulted to the fact that the head of condominium or uh, people they just uh, um, are irritated uh, they do not like the situation and uh, all goes the wrong way so uh, we need uh, monetization of subsidies uh, and uh, we need uh, money for energy efficiency and two billion are needed uh, for uh, warm uh, credits and my colleague will tell you more about it Mr. Jana, thank you for very uh, contentious speech. Uh, I would like to remind you about questioners. Do not forget to fill them out. The main aspect I want to talk about, I would like to focus on it, the success stories and the public awareness campaign, this is uh, which is lacking in our country. We have already what to talk about, that the first monetized subsidies were, have already been paid and many people uh, have already spent this money not for energy efficiency and now they understand how now how it is uh, how it works in other countries and we don't we lack this information i'm very glad that today we have representatives of energy efficiency fund and the saees representative at our round table discussion because uh, uh, we accent on energy saving and energy efficiency and when we are talking about energy poverty and the need to protect vulnerable consumers so I am giving the floor to state agency on energy efficiency and energy saving uh, advisor uh, good afternoon dear friends and colleagues talking about uh, the energy efficiency and energy industry uh, it is was uh, looking on to the end of 2014 when Ukraine understood that energy security is the uh, issue of national security self-sufficiency rate is an indicator of how much resource we have uh, uh, to maintain energy uh, Apply. We need to uh, develop uh, renewables and improve uh, energy efficiency and increase energy savings. We started uh, uh, today with a definition of energy poverty. They are multiple, but many sources uh, they refer to energy poverty uh, as. Uh, to payment of more than 10 percent share of, uh, in utilities bills, uh, 10 percent of income. In Ukraine, uh, this definition uh, gives 15 percent share of uh, uh, income. Uh, the question is whether a um, household uh, uh, feels uh, uh, easy to provide comfortable temperatures in their premises. 30 percent of Ukrainian respondents said uh, it is hard for them to pay their bills. In 2018, uh, 
70 billions were paid from national billion for subsidy in 2019, 55 billion. In 2020, there will be 6.9 million. 2.6 billion uh, were spent for energy efficiency. This is too little. This 2.6 billion included uh, uh, also engagement of 8 billion of private investment, 6.8 uh, million people use this uh, warm loan. So we started changing the mentality of people. People started trusting the government, the state, when at the end of 2014 the warm loan program started. Uh, only 100 families used it within the first months. Uh, SAEE representatives uh, uh, were visiting uh, Ukrainian uh, citizen towns uh, uh, to with public awareness campaign, uh, but people did not trust. Uh, they uh, were about to uh, throw rocks onto the representative of the state agency on energy efficiency, offering them to take loans. And now, uh, warm loans are a program which is which people are well aware about. We have 4.5 thousand condominia who have already completed integrated uh, thermal modernization of the buildings. We have success stories all over Ukraine <coughs> where uh, condominia conducted have already completed their uh, oh, integrated uh, thermal modernization of buildings. This is if we talk about energy efficiency improvement. Talking about monetization of subsidies, yes, it is essential because when you get money, you can invest them into energy efficiency improvements. This is a basic principle. If you ask me or if you ask about the stand of SAEE, we are for monetization. This is the second message. The third message is when we are about to switch to uh, richer, to talk to richer uh, population, the state should promote uh, renewables as well, including in the housing sector. If we uh, look onto the network and the problems, uh, uh, the challenges of energy uh, system, uh, the energy should be consumed in the places where it is generated. So uh, micro uh, solar power plants uh, are in being installed on the roofs of the housing stock. Uh, uh, for, uh, in some quarters, 30 to 70 percent of uh, uh, solar uh, power plants installation uh, uh, increment. 12,000 of households uh, uh, installed these plants last year. Uh, so summarizing, I would like to say that, that this state and the business sector and public should understand that energy efficiency, uh, investing in energy efficiency means investing in the future and the state should not spend all money for spam cities. The goal of the state is to create conditions uh, for enabling investment from private sector into this sphere. Thank you 
for your optimistic speech what I understood one of the senses is that improvement in energy efficiency result in multiplication economic effect because uh, for subsidies we only spend money and the chain reaction result um, in increased energy dependence uh, when uh, we, we want to ask about this to Mr. Konstantin now. I would like to give the floor to Ms. Yulia. She will show us uh, the presentation. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Ms. Golovatyuk is the Director of Energy Efficiency Fund. Uh, here you see the presentation. Colleagues, I'm glad to uh, greet the, the roundtable participant. The Energy Efficiency Fund started its operations this year and uh, from September 3rd, 2019, we launched the uh, Energy Home program and we started accepting uh, the applications from uh, multi-apartment houses from apartment houses we have already the first application
from basement, which will give the best effect if we talk about comfortable living of ha uh, families in uh, apartment houses. Uh, the other measures uh, are also um, listed on the website, uh, on our website. So this integrated approach is one on which our international partners insisted. Uh, if we look at any business, uh, which, uh, a business to be successful need minimum viable product to be developed. We did the same. <coughs> then we understand that energy efficiency FAD program should also be improved. We are waiting for the feedback from population. Later I will tell you about our strategy as concerns funding. Every year it is supposed that the country will European Union fund. This, the, so these grants will be co-financed by the EU and Ukrainian state. Uh, it is worth noting that European partners, uh, they provided money uh, for grants and for the projects uh, which helped to establish the EEF. Uh, and there is a network of regional consultants available. Uh, these consultants, they help condominia. The first application was uh, received as it was compiled together with uh, uh, consultants, thanks to the joint efforts. Uh, we have the list of our consultants on our website. The uh, IFC helped us with management and a lot of efforts they put into making operations of the fund possible. We have also GIZ partners. This partner helps us with training energy auditors and they help us with strategic areas. And thanks to GIZ, thanks to Ministry of Environment of Germany, uh, helping us with uh, laws, they help us to convert subsidies into investments. The idea to establish this fund started from uh, turning the switching from subsidies to uh, energy efficiency. So both the fund and our apartments now should seek the ways uh, how to help uh, condominia, uh, how to help people living in apartment houses who are holders of subsidies. Uh, so uh, 
we need to understand uh, how the new monetized subsidies will work, but next uh, year we will have more options uh, for subsidy holders. They will be able to get uh, higher subsidies, uh, to get higher grants. UNDP uh, project houses also helps uh, the uh, uh, condominium heads uh, can become managers. Um, but thanks to UNDP and the EU projects, uh, uh, assistance is provided. Uh, Integrated grants are provided. You can see this uh, the grant policy description on this slide. In a simplified matter, we give grants in uh, three steps by three tranches. The first portion of the grant uh, is provided upon application. When we get application from a condominium, uh, the documents of energy audit uh, were provided to us, and uh, the energy efficiency fund will repay 70% uh, of energy audit and certification when uh, this uh, uh, when we prove uh, that the application is approved uh, upon consideration of all documents developed by the energy auditor, then design documentation is developed and the new application for approval of design documents is submitted by the condominium. Uh, again, the energy efficiency fund uh, refunds 70% of design document costs. Uh, if you remember, the regulations has been adopted uh, about energy audits. So energy efficiency fund uh, repays 70% uh, of um, uh, audit costs because uh, um, when we want to insulate the building, we should be uh, sure uh, that this building can bear all this insulation on it. Because you know there were cases when the building can fall due to some reconstruction work. So uh, the energy audit uh, and the residents of this building, they should know that this uh, measures they are uh, compliant with legislation. The third tranche, which is the last tranche, uh, means 70% refund of uh, technical and certification costs uh, and uh, repair and materials and uh, inspection of communication systems uh, and uh, technical s surveillance, certification of energy performance of buildings. Uh, the fund provides 70% of course refund. Uh, for repairs, works, and uh, equipment and materials, we compensate 40% uh, for easy package and 50% for B package. First 300 condominia, they can get 20% uh, uh, additional grant. Uh, those uh, condominia who will fall into this uh, group, they will 
get uh, 60% in case of easy package and 70% refund in case of uh, B package in one so we have first application filed on September 5th talking about uh, effect of these measures, the easy package, 20% uh, improvement, 20% savings of energy consumption, while our B package allows uh, to save up to 60% of heating costs. Uh, so, according to our estimates and our strategy, the average cost of project of, uh, of easy package will be uh, from 600 to, uh, to 700 million grivnas. Uh, our first uh, projects uh, show that there are uh, such uh, uh, buildings, such condominium which uh, uh, go in to conduct uh, modernization programs, uh, pro programs uh, starting with 600,000 grivnas and ending with 17 million grivnas. So, uh, the Energy Efficiency Fund uh, provides assistance to such active uh, condominium. Uh, here you see the first uh, birds, uh, the pilot uh, project, uh, flagships. Uh, uh, this condominium uh, have not only developed already the design documentation, they have already started buying uh, equipment. Uh, so uh, most of them take easy packages, but we think that by the spring next year, this condominium will already complete these projects, and we are very thankful to this uh, our first uh, 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 pilot projects. We learned lessons and now we improve our uh, program thanks to uh, our condominium uh, who are the first who start uppers. I'd like to remind that energy efficiency are not uh, words, not theory, not directives we should to implement. This is real life and energy efficiency as a component of energy independence of the country is very important because it provides uh, the opportunities to save resources and to feel more comfortable. Uh, as a result of energy efficiency measures, every family can get uh, uh, more comfort uh, in repaired buildings, uh, but also uh, lower consumption and uh, lower bills. This means uh, in some cases, such as warm loans uh, in Kiev, um, condominia, some condominia pay four, four, four times less than they used to pay before. Uh, and as a result of implementation of these measures, uh, property price uh, also grows. Uh, 
uh, because the apartment uh, in uh, the energy efficient uh, house will uh, cost uh, uh, will have higher price on the secondary market than the apartment in the similar building which is not energy efficient uh, we have so we assist our um, citizens uh, we help them this way by energy efficiency improvement we help them with paying their utility bills and here we can see that uh, not only our citizens but also the state contribute to uh, environment preservation because we this way um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we calculated that by 2023, this is the end of our program, uh, 2,000 projects uh, will be uh, implemented and by 2023, 16,000 projects will have been implemented. If we calculate the number of apartment houses in Ukraine, over 80% of them needs thermal modernization. So uh, we will contribute repair of 10% uh, of the housing stock in Ukraine. And similar funds in Ukraine uh, are capable to implement uh, repair only of 5% of the whole housing stock in the country. Talking about reduction of natural gas consumption as an indicator, within five years we will save 1.4 billion cubic meters of natural gas. Um, for 20 years of project implementation, this could be 10 billion uh, natural gas uh, savings. Uh, this means uh, reduction of uh, CO2 emissions, so the mission of the fund is to assist uh, uh, residents of apartment houses uh, to improve conditions, their living standards, but uh, at the same time uh, to contribute uh, to environment preservation and uh, uh, fighting with climate change. Thank you, Yulia, for your constructive optimism. And your ambition showed that the fund is in the good hands, and I would like to wish you success and be persistent to achieve these high goals that are able to change the situation in the country completely. Thank you very much for your speech. Uh, Yulia spoke about uh, comprehensiveness, and uh, I really like this. This is lacking in Ukrainian policy when we start to use some measures in order to overcome some negative things. Usually in our country they look one-sided, not well thought through, and uh, do not yield good results. So this comprehensiveness of the fund uh, in relation to the tasks, this allows to speak about optimism in the sphere of uh, energy efficiency and energy saving in our country. So our speakers ended their speeches. Now we have time for questions. Please introduce yourself first and uh, ask speakers or name those speakers uh, whose answers you want to hear. We have first question. Take a mic, please. Thank you. Federation of Trade Unions, Sechin uh, Alexander Ivanovich, I have a question to Yulia. I would like to express my opinion on today's topic. First question to Yulia. 
First, I would like to thank you for your wonderful presentation, and I would like to wish you success in implementation of these ambitious plans. The question is, tell us please, except uh, condominia, can other people from uh, apartment um, buildings, uh, can these people get warm credits? or this help from the fund? This is the first question. And the second question, you've uh, said that you got 1.5 billion to your fund last year. Please tell us about the use of this money, where this money went to. Also, I would like to express my opinion on the topic. Maybe answer first, and then I will take the floor. I believe please, you may express your opinion now. First of all, Dinas Nazarenko said that our legislation is not fully, does not fully correspond to European legislation. Uh, our legislation is one uh, of the best in Europe concerning individual metering. There is commercial metering and non-commercial commercial metering. Now they do not say about uh, um, the um, they speak about metering devices that are set in some premises and there are non-commercial uh, that you've said they are uh, set in flats and uh, also distribution devices uh, they are mentioned in legislation non uh, 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 commercial devices they should not be checked this can be decided by community uh, or how to calculate the difference uh, so uh, legislation is in effect only starting May this year um, concerning this topic. Uh, so about monetization, the opinion of the public, uh, the monetization of subsidies has many risks, dear colleagues. You've mentioned that uh, people may spend money differently. Monetization of subsidies has uh, such risks, especially benefits monetization. Not all benefits may be monetized. You know that in our country, we have more than 20 laws on benefits. Some benefits cannot be monetized. We should not speak about it. It's impossible. Second, those benefits that uh, uh, can be monetized, uh, how they will be monetized, I will tell you. I, as a hold of benefits, uh, I addressed uh, uh, the office and asked how it will be implemented. They said uh, that if you write an application, you will get money in your, uh, uh, and uh, if you do not write this application, if you do not submit application, they, then you uh, uh, have the same situation that you, as you have now. So as uh, I write, for example, application, to get benefit in accordance with legislation in the monetized form, and I will get it uh, in only in three months. But I need money to pay for services and time. So the situation is really difficult. And this is risk number one, when this monetization will uh, be implemented to life. So uh, now I would like to hear an answer from Yulia. Thank you for your question. I would like to assure you that uh, money is safe on the account at State Treasury and 1.5 billion that came last year, uh, 1 billion uh, 450 million. Uh, this money will go to grants uh, 
and also the money of the EU, and also we have support for project activity, and also the uh, so this 100 million euro, the envisaged also for grants and everything else. So this is additional finance and out the uh, 80 million million. Uh, up provided by the EU and uh, 20 million by Germany. Um, the fund, uh, energy efficiency fund started only this uh, 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 started only this year and uh, um, on, until April we had only one person on the staff then uh, we uh, then we had uh, three people now we have 25 people in order to work with applications, but you know that costs are uh, really small. Uh, that uh, those uh, money, uh, this money that we use is small. So uh, we have enough of money to provide them for grants, and all money that will come, the main part will go for gr will go to grants. Who can use this program? According to law on fund, the focus is uh, housing sector, and in accordance with the agreement that was signed between uh, Ukraine and EU, uh, this uh, program should include the apartment buildings, and uh, uh, the beneficiaries are uh, co-owners uh, and the unions uh, that represent the interests of co-owners in accordance with the statistics that we got from the Ministry of the Regional Development and Statistics that uh, is on the side of State Statistics Department. We have 31,000 condominia in Ukraine that were created. Those people <coughs> who can apply. So uh, 4,000 uh, uh, of, um, of other forms of uh, uh, union of owners uh, and, um, uh, and uh, UNDP houses program also helps um, uh, so there is a uh, program that helps uh, um, co-owners to re-register, and uh, now we do not have problems to create uh, a condominium to re-register, and uh, this project helps to uh, create condominium and to uh, re-register other form of co-ownership. Uh, some. People do not want to create condominia, but you should remember that uh, the state and identified the beneficiaries, so these beneficiaries should be co-owners, because this is a social project that helps co-owners. And uh, I believe that in the first years of work, we see the demand for the program from condominia, and then we will see whether we should change something or to broaden the circle of beneficiaries to see where to spread our program uh, to now. This is uh, condominium. Uh, thank you, Julia. Now, uh, Tatiana will comment uh, about the second part. I would like to comment on gas. To be clear, you've mentioned law on uh, uh, housing services, but we uh, this uh, we have the law on uh, uh, metering of gas, and uh, uh, we have problems on implement uh, problems of implementation. I analyzed European gas energy directives. They clearly state about individual metering as commercial. This law, this legislative base is normal. 
This is individual metering, but also we have uh, the bylaw adopted by the regulator in the sector, and it says that commercial metering is uh, uh, metering uh, of the uh, all house m metering, um, and uh, we see that uh, uh, many houses they have one metering device per uh, apartment uh, uh, apartment block, and uh, uh, this is not right. So. In this case, bylaws contradict the law about monetization. I won't comment on this. Maybe um, the specialist on uh, social policy should uh, speak about the influence of monetization because 70 or 80 percent of people they get monetized uh, subsidy, and as I know, uh, they. Uh, Pay okay, so um, ninety six percent of people uh, pay. Uh, so uh, yes, there are risks uh, concerning benefits, and uh, I agree that we should resolve it. But we do not have uh, other choice because some uh, uh, <coughs> offices they. Uh, um so uh, it is difficult to to improve the situation in the market of gas and electricity because it is difficult to explain to those international uh, suppliers that will come to the market and uh, this is uh, and only monetization may remove all the risks from this market. Uh, so we are sorry that we do not have colleagues who may comment on monetized subsidies. That's why I would like to shift to another question. Please, second row. Igor Cherkashin, Energy Efficiency Platform. I would like uh, to uh, speak about the topic of this discussion. So this is energy poverty. I would like to cite the documents, European documents, that should be mentioned when we start discussion of energy poverty. Uh, uh, more than 50 million households in European Union try to reach uh, optimal level of uh, heating in their houses and uh, to live in um, uh, good conditions. So the issue of energy poverty is the issue of health and influence on health and the issue of expenses uh, of insurance companies to, uh, to provide for health and also an explanatory note to update the directive on energy efficiency, it is stated that 50 million households uh, have losses. Five hundred billion euros losses because this problem of energy poverty it really exists. So we should understand what energy poverty means, and this is a comprehensive problem. Unfortunately, there are no political speakers who, to whom I want to address this question to, and uh, we should get answer why this uh, poverty appeared, what became a detonator, why it appeared in, at a such a large scale, and who is responsible politically for this. Unfortunately, speakers who were declared to this press conference, they promoted market relations uh, in uh, supply of energy resources, and uh, it delayed uh, the introduction of instruments of support, and uh, our society was um, uh, 
it was difficult for us, uh, for our society to understand the situation. And uh, social tariffs uh, may be used until uh, targeted uh, measures are implemented. Uh, so uh, European documents say this, and uh, for five years they said that uh, this is not the case, that, sh that we should put high price at energy sources, and this will stimulate people, and uh, they will then implement energy efficiency measures. And European documents state that first you should introduce energy efficiency in order to deal with energy poverty. So five years ago, uh, an algorithm was provided to our society that was wrong. And uh, the representatives of the new power, they should name people who are politically guilty, responsible for this energy collapse in our country. And also in Ukraine, energy poverty exists, and uh, there is no such thing in other uh, developed countries. Uh, in uh, Energy poverty in public sector, for example, uh, there are limits on payment uh, for energy resources for schools and uh, hospitals, uh, and these institutions uh, are the heated, and uh, uh, some fungi appear, and uh, respiratory diseases are on the increase among children and people who work there. They get professional diseases, and this issue is not discussed. How Ministry of Finance has established the limits on this uh, uh, energy poverty. Uh, so uh, they use uh, Soviet law of 1994. They do not promote energy efficiency at, as it is provided by Directive uh, 80, uh, 28 of EU and its up update of 2018. So, uh, this um, restricts investment to the budget sector because uh, baseline uh, is lowered and we cannot uh, attract capital because uh, they understand that they cannot get economic effect because energy consumption is uh, artificially uh, lowered. and. Uh, uh, municipalities do not want to take responsibility for violations of sanitary norms that happened during many years. So people should uh, um, recognize their mistakes. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Babak, Orzhek, Veros, and uh, whether they are ready publicly to say that uh, <coughs> fake political decisions were taken by former president and former prime ministers, former uh, cabinet of ministers, and they brought situation in Ukraine to catastrophic level of energy poverty. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, I can say that uh, in our country, correct decisions uh, are adopted not often. Yes, the guilty individuals uh, will be found, and if they are not found, they will be appointed, I think, uh, which uh, the practices show. Uh, I cannot now answer this question in full. Good afternoon. My name is Latsky Viktor. I'm a senior expert at Razunkov Center for Energy Programs. At Razunkov Center, we won the grant in 2015. We proposed the project of institutional reform of the energy sector of Ukraine. Uh, it was completed in 2016, and our proposals were that one of the main, one of the key institutional mechanisms which can uh, read the uh, issue of energy efficiency on the agenda is the establishing of the Air energy efficiency fund. We were co-authors together with Visegrad group countries. I'm very glad to see here 
the representative of EEF, Miss Yulia. Uh, my greetings uh, and congratulations uh, on the launch of your fund's operations. Uh, the second uh, uh, topic, uh, the presentation uh, today uh, has uh, switched uh, from energy poverty reduction to energy efficiency improvement, and this is very reasonable, very much reasonable because in the poorest European country in this area, uh, we have energy intensity which is high. On the one hand, we are the poorest country. On the other hand, we are spending more, most uh, than um, all uh, other European countries. I'd like uh, to ask a question which is professional to the developers, authors of this uh, policy. What criteria of energy poverty you set in your project? What are uh, the uh, quantitative indicators? You say that the government should take decision and we the experts should provide tools for the government. What criteria to set for energy poverty? So what are the criteria in quantitative uh, measures? The second question, do you think uh, the research should be extended to cover social infrastructure facilities such as uh, schools, kindergartens, hospitals? I think uh, they are also energy poor consumers because there is no stable governmental support. It depends on the budget situation, but uh, as they are uh, funded from national uh, budget, uh, but uh, we should recommend uh, some next steps for the new government. I am giving the floor to Denis Nazarenko, who will comment the research. Thank you. Your question is very uh, reason, very much reasonable. Uh, we have not developed new methodology. This is a part of international research, and we try to um, answer questions which we were provided so that we can compare data uh, with other countries. Uh, uh, participants in the research, the leader was Georgia. Uh, so they will see what the indicators are most comparable uh, so that the, our assessment is more based on uh, objective data. Uh, so the first uh, was uh, uh, who believes his energy poor. So the share of households which think they cannot uh, provide comfortable temperature in their houses. Uh, we looked at the number of people who spend more than the certain threshold to to pay for uh, utility bills. Uh, there was a list of questions which we answered. Uh, as to a second question, social sphere is very, very important. And we should note here that uh, uh, some positive dynamics is present in energy efficiency domain. There are energy service contracts, which are multiple and uh, uh, 
budget funded sphere yes budget funded institution uh, they feel fear but more and more contracts uh, have been been uh, signed and to continue my answer i would like to comment what i understood during this panel discussion that the complicated warm loans program uh, is under the threat that uh, due to the launch of energy efficiency fund warm loans program could be stopped and today we heard the number that most of population uh, who are energy poor, they are not uh, in the category which is covered by the EEF program. And the most of these people are socially vulnerable. So this vulnerable group of people, if, if there is no warm loans, how they they will get assistance from the state. So this is a question for future, for a long term. This is a question maybe to Miss Yulia, whether there are any ideas how to extend portfolio of the fund uh, tools uh, to cover not only apartment houses but also uh, vulnerable group of population yes a very interesting question uh, we have been thinking for a long time when we were establishing the fund what are the prospects future prospects uh, yes we shall be improving our program uh, further, uh, package one, package B, this is good, but even in this uh, area we have the space for improvement. Yes, we need uh, also uh, to assist renewable sources. Uh, uh, dissemination and uh, as to the warm loans, we consider, we support that in future uh, the regulations will be adjusted as concerns uh, energy performance classes of buildings because now there are um, discrepancies uh, in methodologies of energy performance assessment. There are some delays at the level of ministry and this influences our programs. First, we uh, think of launching various levels or various amounts of grants depending on the energy performance class of building. But to this end, uh, the regulatory controversies should be eliminated. Uh, I would like to quote the uh, uh, success case of Lithuanian fund. Uh, they provide grants when the building performance is improved by 40%. Now we do not link uh, our grants uh, to the level of performance improvement. Uh, the Fund, our fund uh, should provide at least 20% of energy savings thanks to its activities. In some buildings, we see that uh, energy performance improvement will be only 10 or 15 percent. So far, uh, we uh, uh, set some uh, criteria, but our criteria are not strict. Uh, we will see on the results, on the outcomes of the first projects, and then we will adjust. Maybe we will set the criteria of final energy performance improvement. 
the agreement on association with the EU and the EU directive, they say that our uh, buildings should be near zero consumption. As soon as the state would set these standards, and this uh, should be in 2020, according to the regulations, then um, these measures will be allowed to, for implementation by condominia. So we will see for further uh, developments uh, in the course on the path of the reforms in the country. So here there is uh, uh, much space for efforts and uh, uh, taking uh, example from Lithuania or Poland uh, in uh, the operations of uh, energy efficiency funds, uh, we discussed uh, in public uh, our program of the Ukrainian Energy Efficiency Fund and the grant policy as approved. Maybe upon observation over, this, over the first uh, months of the program, maybe uh, adjustments will be uh, included. Our program maybe will be updated. We provide now 70% refund. Maybe there will be new limits set. It was proposed by German colleagues for um, a package, maybe five 15% threshold will be set as a final improvement. It should be uh, not less than 15%. And for B package, the improvement should of uh, energy savings should be at least 5%. So for us, this is a challenge. All country the whole country and its uh, governmental bodies uh, goes on the path of digitalization. We are also developing the digitalization platform uh, for our in-house operations, but also <laughs> the platform will be Mm, created for online applications. This is a big task, a big challenge for us, and uh, we, I think uh, this task uh, will be completed by 2021 because uh, the, the <coughs> state in the sm smartphone uh, slogan um, we have in the country and in 2021, 2020, 2022 we should uh, become capable, we can um, increase our uh, capacity, uh, strengthen our capability. We focus uh, on uh, working with new coalition, new government. Maybe we will need to expand our activities or Last year, MPs already asked us why you did not switch uh, and do not propose anything for individual houses, for private households. Uh, and also we were offered uh, to be, um, create projects uh, for business sector. Uh, but uh, let us first uh, complete at least one program efficiently and correctly. We are open for other uh, 
proposals. One of our values is professionalism, so all our activities uh, should be uh, conducted in an integrated manner. Uh, so verification is uh, important uh, when we do not see real values, real figures. We need verification to be conducted. We shall calculate energy savings for every project. We work in an integrated professional manner. If we uh, will extend to cover a new sector, a new uh, segment of clients uh, in uh, such as uh, individual households, uh, not apartment houses, then we should uh, have a very <coughs> strict, uh, well balanced approach to, because. Um, we should prevent any uh, misuse of money. Uh, thank you, Miss Yulia. Uh, uh, unfortunately, our time is over. This is the second round table discussion this year, and it shows that this topic is so deep and so wide that it is hard to to cover all the aspects within one round table discussion. But uh, uh, I'm very glad that we have managed to, to cover uh, the topics and uh, we look in optimistic way on uh, energy poverty reduction in Ukraine and uh, we hope that the state in a smartphone uh, will really uh, assist us but not only evoke uh, smiles. Thank you everyone for participation and attention. Uh, and please uh, uh, do not forget to hand out your field questionnaires. Thank you.